Welcome back NUIC football fanatics. We're here to bring you our week five matchups and predictions. We had quite an interesting week last week as pretty much every game was a blowout. What do you think, Shane? Yeah, we, we thought there would be a few closer games. You know, we didn't think that, I mean, as far as the games we covered, uh, we had Milledgeville and Orangeville, which we thought would be a great game. That turned out to be a, a blowout by Milledgeville. And we also thought we... Picked Forrest in the win against Amboy, but we thought it'd be a little closer than it was. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a touchdown against the second string in the fourth quarter for Amboy to finally get on the board. I thought it was right. going to be a lot closer. Plus, they had that running clock in the first quarter. Um, I was kind of surprised about that until the early goings of the game when you watch Forrest and score three touchdowns in under three minutes of possession time. That just really blew me away. Right, and another game, you know that we fought might have been a toss up was uh Aquin and AFC and you know that also proved to not be the case. You know, Aquin is starting to make a name for itself, I believe. Well, the Aquin AFC game had a very close first half. It was really in right. the second half where Aquin blew it open and I think part of that came when they scored late in the second quarter to right. take the twenty four to fifteen lead and from there AFC just it's, didn't have it, no it answer. Was a snowball effect at right, that point. Correct. Yeah. So um this this next week, we should see a couple games come to uh, be very do or very competitive games. We hope so. I mean, we look at the schedule, and you know, we we have a uh, Dakota and Lena Winslow facing off, which should be a great game, and then we have a uh, East Dubuque and Amboy matchup, which we feel should be a great game. Outside of those, I mean, there's still going to be a uh, a bit of difference in closeness, I believe. Yeah, you're going to have that. Uh, Another game that could possibly be pretty close is going to be the Polo Warren game, right, I think. Right, exactly. Um, but, yes, there's going to be some big games, right. and I think there's going to be a few more close games this week. We're going to start off in the upstate division where we have Durand, who comes in at 0-4 after their 64 nothing loss to Stockton, going down to AFC to visit the Raiders, who are 1-3 and three after their 44-15 to 15 loss to Aquin, which that game was a surprising game for many people in the area. Um, Shane, what do you think the uh, this game will look like? You know, Duran has struggled to put points up on the board this year, and, you know, maybe this is a chance for them to put up a few points, but I still like AFC in this game. You know, looking at AFC, you know, you've had that, I don't know what you want to call it against Milledgeville where they kind of let that they didn't slam the door shut like they should have. You know, that's a game they should have won. And, you know, they look back at the Akron game and think, well, we played with them. You know, we certainly it was certainly there for the taking. You know, this is an AFC team that suddenly won in three when we had them picked to go to the playoffs. And, you know, you get Duran and Orangeville and River Ridge, but at the back end of your schedule, you're still, gonna, still looking at Polo and Stockton. You already have three losses. You know, you can't win all those games. Friday, but you got to get it going against Durant to get going in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. You look at AFC schedule, and they got Durant, Orangeville, River Ridge, so that should get them to four and three in what we feel are right. a little bit weaker opponents. Orangeville could give them a little bit of a game based on what we've seen, but that game last week against Millville was a surprise. Um, but then they finished with Polo and Stockton, and now you're looking at that Week 8 matchup with Polo as being pretty much playoff game, a playoff game to get into the playoffs for AFC. Exactly, and, and it might even be of significance for Polo, too. We'll have to see how that shakes out. Yeah, well. absolutely. As far as Durand, Durand keeps fighting, but they just don't have enough to compete right. at a high level right now low this, numbers year. this year. Low yeah. numbers. Um, with low numbers comes lack of overall athletic talent. Not saying that they're not athletic, but you just don't have a lot to go back so on. You don't have the pool. You don't kids. have the pool kids to um, come from. As far as Durand, they just need to keep working hard. And honestly, you can actually learn a lot in defeat. And these kids can do that. They can still stay positive and get better as they improve through the season. That's right. what they need to focus on. And I would agree with that. Um, Duran, I still believe you're going to have a chance to get a win at, at the end of your schedule, at least. You know, that Week 9 matchup against River Ridge, you know, you guys are going to battle, and I think that's a winnable game. So there is stuff to look forward to. It's not completely lost by any stretch of imagination. No, no, definitely. I, if I, I And for Duran, you're, you're trying to win games, and... Um, you want to keep trying to win games, and hopefully you break through by the end of the season. 
Um, as far as AFC, um, they're about where I thought they would be after week four, um, originally through the preseason rankings. But honestly, they could be a little bit better than where they're at. I mean, right. um, Forrest and yeah, sure, they were going to lose to Forrest, and we picked that. Everybody picked that. Um, as far as Warren, though, you lose to Warren by two points. You lose to Milledgeville after you had that big lead. You lose to them by three points. And then you come in against Aquin, and you lay an egg. And honestly, that could be that's the difference between being 2-2 two and two right now or possibly even 3-1. Three and three one. And one. Instead of one three, and now and, and so really yeah, like you had stated, their playoff, uh, their playoffs possibility is dwindling down very right. quickly, and really I see this as a must-win game for them because you look like I said, at week eight they have Polo, week nine they have Stockton. I don't see them beating Stockton, so week eight Polo is going to be a play-in game. This is definitely a must-win game to get that Week 8 game to be a playing game. Right. This brings us back to Conley Field, where Aquin will play at home for the second week in a row as they host Orangeville. Orangeville comes in at 1-3 after their 53-7 loss to Milledgeville last week. And Aquin comes in at 4-0 after their impressive win over AFC at 44-15. Um... In my opinion, I feel that Aquin has a little bit of the edge up. You actually went to Orangeville last week. Right. Saw them in their game against Millsville. Yeah. Tell me what you think about this matchup. You know, I after seeing Orangeville, um, their line play really needs to improve. Um, I don't remember the exact number. I want to say there was probably seven sacks by Millsville in the first half. Um, you know, Orangeville's a passing team, and their success – relies greatly on the pass protection and if you don't have the pass protection you know you see that quarterback being rushed making bad throws so you know for me Orangeville needs to improve the offensive line play and that wasn't there against Milledgeville um you know they've like I said they need more coverage but Orangeville also has to step it up on defense you know they were giving up huge holes against Milledgeville and you know Milledgeville has a good running attack but you just wonder how Orangeville will be able to handle Aquin in this matchup. Right, and that, and honestly, looking back, I really thought that Orangeville, um, their game last week with Milledgeville would have been closer. I right. think we both did, actually. Yeah. Um, just basing it off of common opponents. Um, but it just wasn't the matchup that we thought it would be or probably that they may have thought it would be. Uh, they need to keep getting better, though. Orangeville's going in the right direction. They need to Absolutely. keep building on that. Um, as far as Aquin, we stated last week that Aquin's winning the close ball games, and they're right. creating that identity for themselves to be able to pull them close ball games out. Last week was a close ball game in the first half, and then they overpowered AFC in the second half. You said it earlier, a snowball effect. Right. They scored that last touchdown late in the second quarter to take a 24-15 lead. And then in the third and fourth quarters, they just took over the game. Right. Um, this game I really see Aquin pulling out, though. Um, I think they just have a little bit more firepower than the Broncos. With right. both teams wanting to pass, Aquin's going to know how to defend Ac or Orangeville's pass game. Um and a win here for the Bulldogs should get them in the playoffs at five and four if they were to go five and four. But being at five and zero, oh, I don't see them going five and four. Right, I see exactly. them getting another win down the road, maybe two or three. Um, but this will definitely get them into that secured playoff spot, in my opinion, because they're going to have some good playoff points with that crossover game with Amboy. And I would tend to agree with that. You know, they have Amboy, and Amboy is going to give them some points. But you know, looking at Aquin's schedule, they very easily could go 7-2 and two or 8-1. and one. Yeah, I agree with that statement for sure. This takes us down to Milledgeville where the River Ridge Wildcats come in to visit the hometown Missiles. River Ridge comes in at 0-4 after their 34-6 loss to Warren last week. And Milledgeville comes in at 3-1 after that big win over Orangeville, 53-7. Uh, where, what do you think about this matchup here, Shane? You know, I, I like Milledgeville. Um, in this matchup, their running attack was very good against Orangeville. Um, huge holes the offensive line was holding up. Um, you know, they have a speedy guy, and they also have a bruiser. You know, what more could you want at this level? You know, it's really a great running attack. 
Um, you know, for Milledgeville, they're three and one at this point, but they easily could be sitting there at four and zero. You know, they they gave up that game against Aqua, not gave it up, but you know, they feel as though that could have been a win. You know, Milledgeville has things going in the right direction. I don't see that changing this week. River Ridge, you know, they got to find ways to to build. You know, we we've talked in weeks past. You know, single plays at a time, quarters at a time, halves at a time. You know, this is no different. Um, I don't know that River Ridge is going to necessarily play with Milledgeville, but, you know, you got to build up somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I think River Ridge definitely has improved. We've talked about that right. over the past four weeks now. Uh, they did finally get on the scoreboard last week. That was the first time they've gotten on the scoreboard this season, which we thought that they would have a right. chance of doing. Um, they just need to keep getting better, keep improving, and they need to keep fighting to get better. Right. And, and, and uh, trying to get that first victory of the year. As far as Milledgeville, they need to get to four wins. We said it over and over since week two. Milledgeville needs to be four and one after week five to have a chance at that right. fifth or sixth win right. to get into the playoffs. That's this week. So Milledgeville needs this win. Um, because their last four weeks, they're searching for win number five to get in, and they still have um, Polo, Stockton, Dakota, and Warren on their schedule after right. this week. Um, granted, I see their matchups with Polo and Warren being close. Stockton, Dakota, not so much. Right, and five wins will get the missiles in with their crossover being Dakota. That's not in question at all. Correct. So five wins gets Milledgeville in. You just got to get there. You got to get there. And it starts this week against River Ridge, and I really like uh, Milledgeville in this uh, matchup here. All right, this is going to take us into our Northwest Division matchups, and we're going to start off in Amboy, where they're hosting the East Dubuque Warriors. East Dubuque comes in at 3-1 and one after their 28-6 to six loss to Dakota last week, which was their first setback of the year, while Amboy comes in at 2-2 two and two after their 55-7 to seven loss to Forreston. Um, I really saw that game, to, thought that game would be a little bit closer, and it was, but uh, Forreston just manhandled Amboy like they weren't even there. Right. And, you know, as far as this matchup goes, I think both East Dubuque and Amboy just need to forget about last week. You know, East Dubuque played a good game against Dakota, but we had both picked Dakota to win. We just feel that Dakota's a little bit of a stronger team. But, yeah, I mean, Amboy really needs to forget about this game because, I mean, that's not something you want to have in your mind. Yeah, Forreston's a great team, but we all think that that game should have been closer than what it was. Yeah, definitely. Um, Amboy found out exactly how tough the NUIC is, and it's not as easy as they thought it was coming in at the beginning of the season, uh, coming out of that Three Rivers Conference. Uh, they gave up three touchdowns in less than three minutes of possession time against Forreston, which we stated earlier. And really, I see this game here as a potential must-win for Amboy very, to make the playoffs. Very much so, you know. Like you said, you know, Amboy's already got losses against Dakota and Forrest, and you know, if you lose to East Dubuque, you still have Elena Winslow and EPC remain on the schedule. Amboy needs to win this game, and for East Dubuque, you got to get back to what got you to three and zero. You know, I think East Dubuque might surprise some people. I like East Dubuque in this matchup. Yeah, I think East Dubuque, uh, they got a wake-up call last week against Dakota. Um, this is this game is one of three that they have remaining where they have a legitimate chance right. of winning, and they still need to get two more wins to at least potentially get into that playoff conversation, right. which I feel um, they should have a chance of getting in even if they go 5-4 and four, despite their crossover with Orangeville. Just because of the strength of the schedule on the northwest side, right. it should bode them enough playoff points to right. make that matchup work. Um, I feel the same with you. I do like East Dubuque in this game. They're playing really well. You look at their common opponents, they both have played Dakota um, now. Dakota beat Amboy by three scores. Dakota beat East Dubuque by three scores. I think this is going to be a really good game. Right, and I would agree with that. This takes us over to the Mississippi Valley area where Forreston's going to go visit West Carroll and Savannah. Forreston comes in at 4-0 and after their dominant 55-7 win over Amboy last week, while West Carroll comes in at 1-3, and scoring their first victory over Pectonica 48-12. Um, personally, in my opinion, um, we thought this would be a matchup of teams that would both be making the playoffs. West Carroll's got quite a bit of struggle here to try again in the playoffs moving forward from this point. Right, and it, for West Carroll, you know, 
you gotta make the game shorter. I mean, really, that's the only thing that's slowing down Forreston these days is long, sustained drives. I mean, Forreston's running wild right now. You know, for West Carroll, their best defense against Christensen and all those, you know, the gang, I so call it, their best game plan against them is, you know, keep your offense on the field and just slow the game down as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, I we've, we've watched Forreston play in person twice, and both games right. have been the same scenario. More than six pe different people have gotten the ball. Right. All of them have had less than 10 carries, and Forreston scores so fast, so quick, and often that it's hard to keep up with them. Um, and quite honestly, if I'm Forreston, that's what I need to keep doing. I mean, really, the only team that's even came close to slowing them down was Dakota, and Forreston still beat them 21 to nothing. Right. You know, and for Forreston, you know, all those things you mentioned are correct. And for Forreston, you know, you just got to keep doing what you're doing. You know, at this point in the season, the only team that's going to beat Forreston is Forreston. Yeah, I can see that, too. Um, they're just, they're, they're, they got great size on both the offensive and defensive lines. They fire off the ball. Their backs have speeds, and they just have multiple options. And with a couple, couple weeks ago when they are facing Dakota, we had mentioned that Forreston needed to pass right. the ball. I tell you what, they haven't thrown the ball very much this year. But Hunter Dawes can throw the ball. Right. And so that's not even an option to put them in a passing game because they can throw the they ball. They can throw the ball. Um, as far as West Carroll, um, they did get in that win column, like I said. Um, but they need four more wins to have a chance to make the playoffs. And really, from this point forward, every game is a must-win game. Granted, I don't see them as the favorite in this game. I definitely see Forrest as the favorite heavily favored, um, but after this week, West Carroll needs to focus on getting four more wins, which is going to make every game from here on out a must-win game for them. Right, and you look at West Carroll's remaining schedule after Forest in this week, you, you have Durand, East Dubuque, Galena, Lena Winslow to end the season. You know, you're looking, okay, Durand and Galena are down this year, we can hopefully mark those off as wins, you know, and then you're going to have a tough East Dubuque team, and then you're going to hopefully have a meaningful game against Lena Winslow to end the season. Yeah, if you can get by Durand, East Dubuque, and Galena, now you're at 4-4, four and four, and now that Lena Winslow game means something to you, and that's when you right. got to put it all together. But you got to get there first. Exactly. Um, that Week 7 game against East Dubuque is going to be a tough one. Right. Um, but as far as this week, I like Forreston. Our third game in the Northwest Division takes us to Lanark, where the EPC Wildcats will be hosting the Galena Pirates. Galena comes in with an 0-4 record after their 50-10 loss last week to Lena Winslow, and EPC comes in at a 4-0 mark after their 39-6 win over Polo last week. Um, many of us are really surprised about Galena's 0-4 record. Uh, coming into this game, I really see EPC as a favorite. Um, and Galena's really had a rough start to the year. I would agree with that. You know, <clears throat> we all thought Galena would be there towards the top, you know, going forward, and that's not come to fruition for the Pirates this year. And and likewise, just the opposite of EPC. You know, we have two teams who have gone completely opposite directions of what we predicted each predicted them to go. You know, but as far as this matchup, I really like EPC. You know, Galena... Their defense is struggling this year. You know, you had a Lena Winslow team put up a, a huge amount of points on them that, you know, looking at that game, we knew Lena Winslow would handle business, but I don't think we expected them to give up that many points. Yeah, I thought that game would be a little bit closer because you look back at even the Galena Forreston matchup. Forreston scored 41. Granted, they had 41. It was 41 to nothing before Galena finally scored. So that forced them to put up the running clock. They right. succeeded the win, and Galena scored two touchdowns basically on their second straight. They made it look better. They made it look better. Uh, but, yeah, Lena Winslow putting up 50 on Galena definitely was a little bit of a surprise. I thought Galena would definitely give them a bit better of a matchup. Looking at this game, um, like you said, we thought Galena would definitely be more competitive this year. They came out of a 7-3 and three, uh, record last year after a first-round loss to Stockton in the playoffs. 
they had quite a few people coming back that we thought would be significant contributions to this year's team. Um, but this week just doesn't bode well for Galena, in my opinion, against EPC. Um, as far as EPC, they have been above expectations all year. And I like their week-at-a-time mentality. They've really just settled in that mindset. Randy Ashey's taken over the program, as he has for many years. But he's got this team focused on a game at a time. And it's really worked for this team, especially having... Uh, a lot of sophomores starting and playing significant amount of time. Right, and you know that week to week mentality is going to be huge moving forward. You know this for EPC. This is going to be the last game where you know you look at the schedule and it's like, okay, we can chalk this one up as a victory. You know, you you still have Lee. No, you beat Lena Winslow, which was a great win in week one. But you know, moving forward, you have Dakota, Amboy, Force, and an East Dubuque team that we're not quite sure what they are, but they're going to give them a game, I believe. So you know this. This is important for EPC, you know, to put it in the win column like you should and then, you know, get ready for the grind. Yeah, yeah, because you're coming into it, like you said, a tough four weeks. Um, they really haven't faced much competition since that week one game against Lena Winslow. So in that regard, they're kind of in the same boat as Lena Winslow. Neither one have really played a quality opponent to speak of since each since other. Each other. Right. Um, so this... Granted, this won't be much of a test for EPC. I really see EPC handling business here this week, but after this week, it's going to get tough for them. Right. But I do like EPC this week. This brings us to our crossover game where the Pectonica Indians will host the Stockton Blackhawks. Stockton comes into this game at 4-0 and after their 64 to nothing victory over Duran last week, while Pectonica comes in at 0-4 after losing 48-12 to to West Carroll. I really don't see this as much of a competition for Stockton based on how many points they've put up this year and the fact that they've only given up 12 points on the season through the first four weeks. Right. Stockton's not giving up much. I don't see that changing. In this game, you know, Pecatonica we thought might be a little better this year, but they just haven't quite gotten it rolling yet. Um, you know, Stockton, we as things progress and you look at Stockton's schedule, it's it's almost one of those things where it's probably not going to suit them very well because you know you got kids that aren't playing four quarters, and I don't see that changing this week. I don't see that changing, you know, next week or whatever. You know, Stockton is going to be the favorite. You know. Right now they're four and zero. We got them, you know, going nine zero. We can say that. That's what we believe. You know, you wonder how conditioning, you know, down the road is going to play into this. Conditioning, I see, is going to be a factor if Stockton's not playing their starters for four quarters. But even though we see them favored, especially over the next four weeks, you look at their next four weeks, and they have the toughest part of their schedule the next four weeks with Warren, Milledgeville, Aquin, and AFC. So they're definitely going to get some time in there. At least second half, and, for sure. Right. And, and I feel that Stockton will somewhat be conditioned for this game. I know that they're conditioned in practice. As long as you're going through full practices, working right. hard, getting your conditioning in there, you're still going to be ready for a four-quarter game on Friday night. Um, as far as Peck, you're right. They haven't had the year that they were expecting to have coming in. Um, their best chance for a win, in my opinion, at this time in the year is going to be against Galena. Which is next week. Which is next week. Um, so outside of that, I just don't think Peck Tonica is going to be satisfied with where they thought they would be or should be coming in. Right. Um, as far as Stockton, they have yet to face a team that's challenged them, but they're going to get another big win this week. They're going to add to that point total that they've averaged up. They're averaging over 50 points a game. Um, but like we said, the last four weeks is definitely going to give them a little bit of a challenge. you got to remember, Warren, yes, sir, they lost quite a few guys, but Warren did upset Stockton last year. I don't see it happening this year, but... You never know. That's why you play the game. Stranger things have happened. Right. Um, but I do like Stockton in this game. Our upstate game of the week takes us to Warren, where they're going to host the Polo Marcos. Polo comes in with a 2-2 two and two record after their 39-6 loss last week to EPC. Whereas Warren comes in at 1-3 and three after their 34-6 to six win over River Ridge, finally getting in that win column where we thought they would be back in week one. Um, what do you think about this game here and this matchup, Shane? Well, there's some interesting things. You know, Warren could have easily been 
what three and one by now. You know, you look at their games, or even four and zero oh in some cases. You know, look at the games that they lost early in the season that they feel that they should have won. You know, what was it? The first three weeks they lost by a combined point total of thirteen or something like that. Yes, correct. You know, so you know Warren isn't a team that you can just look past. And you know, Polo, like we've been saying all year, they're not what they were last year, but you got to find a way to get it done. And you know, for Polo, looking at your schedule, this is a must win. If Polo does not win this game, I don't have them making the playoffs. You know, Polo still will have, you know, Warren this week, Milledgeville, Aquin, AFC. You know, those are going to be tough games for Polo. And, you know, it all starts against Warren. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, Polo does, they're they're entering their tough four-game stretch starting this week uh, with uh, Warren. Um They've been absolutely handled the last two weeks with their losses to Stockton and EPC. They need to bounce back this week. They need to believe that they can get the job done. If they can do that and bounce back, then they're going to have a legitimate shot at getting to 7-2 and two or 6-3, and three, maybe 5-4. and four. But they're definitely going to be tested with Milledgeville, Aquin, and AFC coming up. Um, as far as Warren, they got into the win column last week. Uh, that makes this week really a must-win game for them in order to have a chance at the playoffs. You look at their uh, crossover game, they face Galena, and Galena's sitting at 0-4, and we see them at best maybe two or three wins. So they're not going to get a lot of playoff points right. there. So they're going to most likely need to be 6-3, and three, and that starts this week. Um, well, technically it started last week, which they did, but they're going to have to do it again this week. Um... They had that big win. It uh, gives them a boost that they need in order to make a run. A loss and their dream of making the playoffs is going to be over. And that's unfortunate because you look at where they've started. They've been to the playoffs in back-to-back -back years now. And uh, Coach McNutt's done a great job of building that team up. And we really saw a lot of potential right. there coming into this year. And unfortunately... They just didn't get going out of the gate. They had tough losses, like you said. They lost three games in the first three weeks by a combined 13 points. Those are tough losses to right. swallow when you think about those losses taking you out of the playoff picture. Right, because, you know, say they do come out the gate 4-0 and like they thought that they could have, you know, suddenly you still have Durand on your schedule and, you know, a depleted Galena team, there's six wins. And now, you know, you're at 1-3 one and, one and, and You'd like to get it going against Polo, but you know it doesn't get any easier. Stockton's still looming. Yeah, you got Stockton up. Polo's gonna be a matchup that you can win, but so could Polo, and even Milledgeville in Week Nine. Right. That's gonna be a matchup that could go either way. And right now, looking at how Milledgeville has played, I, like I see that in Milledgeville's favor. Exactly. Looking out from now. That may change when we get to week nine, depending right. on how we see things going from here. But this exactly. is definitely a must-win game for Warren. However, I do like Polo in this matchup. Yeah, I like Polo, too. Real real small point difference as far as I'm concerned. This takes us to our Northwest game of the week, where we have the number 10 Lena Winslow Panthers taking on the number 8 Dakota Indians. Uh, both teams come in at 3-1. and one. Lena, Lena Winslow won last week... Uh, 50 to 10 over Galena, while Dakota had their 28 to 6 win over previously unbeat East Dubuque. This is a huge game. What do you think about this matchup here, Shane? Well, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready to pick a winner at this point. You know, I see this game as a toss-up, really. Um, you know, Dakota, as far as they're concerned, you know, this is the second week in a row where Winger's been shut down by the opposing defense, and you know, for the first time. This past week, you know, you had other kids step up, and Dakota was also able to get things going on the passing game. You know, I think Lena Winslow is going to have the same game plan. You know, you shut Winger down, and you make the other kids beat you. Yeah, and that's definitely what you need to do. We've said that before. As far as last week, Holstey did a great job. He stepped up, picked up the game. Um, you look at Lena Winslow, though, you had um, Valentine, Lato, and Lingle all ran for over 100 yards last week. Um Granted, that's against a depleted Galena team, but it's Galena nonetheless. And they're they're starting to really come around. You take a look. Okay, they lost week one. They've put together three right. solid wins in a row. 
Um, but it was nice to see Dakota have another option, fin uh, finally seeing somebody else besides Winger do the damage. And that's what Dakota needs to keep doing to be successful. Yeah. Um, as far as my opinion, this is the Panthers' first real test since that week one loss to EPC. Right. Um, they need to bring what they've done in the last three weeks. They need to bring that into this game in order to have a chance to win. I still see Dakota as a favorite in this game. Um, especially playing at home. Um, they need to come ready for a Dakota team that is playing really well. They've played the toughest schedule pretty much in the, the entire conference. conference. Yep. Um, and the fifth hardest schedule in the entire state out of the current 32 teams that are qualified for the playoffs in the current playoff prediction. Um, which means that they've played better competition to this point in the season. Um, as far as Dakota, they need to raise that level of play up a little bit higher. You're right. taking on your big rival. Um, they need to keep finding ways to get their playmakers the ball. Like you said, Winger has been shut down the last two weeks. you got to find other ways to get him the ball. He's obviously your biggest playmaker. you got to get him the ball, whether it be on a screen pass, a slant pass, split him out, get the ball up to him in through the middle right. of the field. you got to get him the ball. Um, it's definitely a pivotal matchup for Dakota and Lena Winslow to keep pace uh, for better seeding come playoff time as well. Uh, and each team seeking uh, win number four. Right. And, you know, you look at Dakota's schedule, Lena Winslow this week, and then a tough matchup against EPC um, before things smooth out a little bit. You know, you got a tough two-game stretch. You know, you've weathered the storm pretty well to this point. You know, you've had a... A loss against Forreston where, you know, a couple plays here and there, who knows what happens, you know. You beat a good West Carroll team, you beat a good Amboy team, and you beat a good East Dubuque team, you know. We're not sure what East Dubuque is at this point, but, you know, I feel that that's... Oh, we're not good, sure what Amboy is either. Right, I feel that those at, the, at this point, though, are good victories, you know. You're coming down the home stretch as far as toughness of schedule, you know. I think Dakota needs to stay focused here. But, you know, it all goes back to whether Lena Winslow can contain Dakota's running attack, and it all comes down to whether Dakota can contain Lena Winslow's running attack. Yeah, I mean, I like you said, I really like Dakota's defense in this game. They're very fast. They're very good at slowing down the edges. And really, from what I've seen out of Lena Winslow, their quarterback can throw the ball, but he's not very accurate right now. And as far as them wanting to run the ball, that just plays in the favor of Dakota in this matchup, and that's why I have Dakota pick to win this game. And I, I like Dakota at home in this matchup. You know, if it was at Lena Winslow and things, a few things here or there go different, you know, who knows. But I think Dakota, you know, being one of the tougher places to play, I like them at home as well. Yep. This is a big week for us here in the NUICFF staff. We have a big rivalry week between Dakota and Lena Winslow. As you can see, the three of us are either wearing Dakota or Lena Winslow shirts. Uh, we got myself, Kyle, Shane, and uh, Carrie here. Uh, this is the first time Carrie's been on video for you guys. What do you think, Carrie? Who do you got in this matchup? Well, unfortunately, you know, it hurts to go against my alma mater, but I unfortunately have to go with Big D this week. But, you know, love to be proven wrong. Yeah. Uh, you heard what me and Shane had to say. We feel this game's going to be really close. I really do like Dakota in this matchup. What do you think, Shane? Yeah, I just think they will be able to get things taken care of at home. So we're only doing this because it's Rivalry Week, in-house Rivalry Week. That's why we're showing our team colors. But that concludes our Week 5 matchups and predictions. We hope you enjoyed the show. As always, root, root for, for the, the NUIC. NUIC.